DNVR Avalanche Podcast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Use code DNVR when you sign up for a new account to get amazing odds boost every single day. AJ Rudo Blaze coming to you live as the Avs fall to the Arizona Coyotes 6-3 to three in, a, in, a, in a weird hockey game. I feel like there's a lot of facets to this. I think you can take a look at some of the bounces in this game and say the Avs did not get very lucky. Uh, you can also take a look at this game and say it's pretty unacceptable from Colorado in a lot of facets too. More of the latter. <laughs> well, we'll get into all of it on the post game show on what was good, what was bad, and what uh, well, everything else that went on in this game because there was kind of a lot. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Hey, 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 hey. post game show. <laughs> That's what I used to do on Reddit. I had a great, good, bad, ugly segment. We used to have a weekly feature there you in go. BSN Denver days. Yeah, good, bad, and the ugly. JD Killian wrote it. One time, uh, in honor of like Pirate Week or something, she did the entire thing in pirate language. Oh, love it. It was tremendous. Look, we got to bring that back. <laughs> I, if you can write it, because that was the thing. I couldn't write it, man. <laughs> well, you see, bad grammar is acceptable in pirate language, so that's a little more approvable. You will me. fit. Yeah, <laughs> I, I do want to, uh, where Kevin starts here, before we, before we yes, get into yes, the course. post game, uh, we are sad that the DNVR Avalanche team is losing... Evan Rowell, but we are happy that he is living getting the dream. What he wants. Yeah. yeah, getting what he wanted. Uh, he is getting a full time job over at Colorado Hockey now, and couldn't be happier. Couldn't be prouder to him. Uh, it's it's uh, from our side of things very amicable, you know. And yep. I mean, like from his side of things too. I mean, yeah. it's not like all all good. He vibes. burned the bridge and left, and like, <laughs> well, we felt good about. No, it was like. We're all really happy for him. We're all really proud of him. He put in a lot of hard work, and now I have to write game grades. So <laughs> my, my we, life just gets harder. We bought him a, a, a couch as a parting gift. <laughs> yeah. We, <laughs> we, should have, we should have sent him a how to sit on a couch YouTube <laughs> tutorial. Uh, but I, I do want to start with a uh, quick shout out to him and... You know, it, if he's watching. Are we uh, going from Colorado hockey now to couch hockey now? Is yeah, that the <laughs> CHN is, is changing a little bit. Um, no, I uh, really, we're really happy. We're really happy for him that um, he gets an opportunity that he really wanted, and uh, we're really, you know, I'm just really proud of him for sticking it out. And he wanted, he wanted a bigger role, and he unfortunately, we couldn't give that to him. Yeah. And uh, you know, he he gets that now, so. Now we have to compete with him, and I have to trash talk him and send him pictures of goat dicks every other day. <laughs> so, don't very specific. You were doing that already. We, I we mean, <laughs> oh, look, don't judge how, I'm, how I go about my friendships, okay? <laughs> no, uh, more than anything, you know, and as, as like the person at the top of the, the food chain at DNVR Avalanche, like, I want all of you guys to get opportunities that, that you want at some point, and... Um, Evan getting this is something that I'm super happy for him. And I was, when the opportunity arose, I, I happily recommended him for that gig. And, it, you know, Hell yeah. we're really, sucks, uh, you know, sucks to lose him, but excited, excited for his future. And we'll be fun to have him on future pods just under a different banner. So absolutely looking forward to it for him and, and, and now for everyone. we have to talk about that hockey yep. game. <laughs> as you so graciously volunteered to do the rundown for us yeah, that's fine you're uh you're up on this one i i have no disappointments about not having to do this one do we have a do we have a one minute uh, there it is that was perfect timing okay uh i don't even know how this game started, Badly. or really how this game went, but really, uh, who scores first? I don't remember. Arizona. I'm just Arizona. kidding, dude. <laughs> no, um, really, like you get you get into a the, the Arizona gets out to really just a three one lead. Yep. Because that's where it felt like the game started. Yeah. And was going to be decided because the Avs played like dog shit, and uh, Arizona, when Arizona gets out to the three one lead. You're like, okay, they're in real, they're in real trouble here. Your give's not playing very well. Uh, the fourth goal kills you. I think the fourth goal is Agreed. the one that really, really, really hurts. I agree. Uh, and then things get away from you in a third period that you're just like, okay, and you know, you end up, you end up in a six-three final where the last three goals of the game weren't really all that. Yeah, relevant. there was yeah. not, there was not a lot of uh, competitiveness at the end of that game, really from either team. 
uh, and everything sucked. Accurate. If you're if you're mad that I'm shouting out my coworker for getting a promotion, man, sorry. I you feel just, like no one's mad about that. Uh, it, homeboy is mad that I started the pregame show with apples and the postgame show with Evan. So, I uh, okay. Yeah, it, you, you got to get over it, homie. <laughs> Whatever. Moving we're, on with we're gonna life. Do, we're going to do an hour on the game. So I'm a little bit more mad about this, and it's a topic I've talked about before. The root of this problem, and while I believe the Avs are still very much in the game, they can't keep spotting teams' leads in the first period, man. Yeah, I think I think we talked about kind of the slow starts being problematic. Uh, and like, it, hey, like, like that Buffalo game, you lose the game in the first 10 minutes. Yep. Uh, I don't know that that was the case. It wasn't tonight. It wasn't, but they they made like, their life harder. You you give up that first goal quickly, and like yeah. you give up a breakaway on the first shift of the goddamn right. game. Yeah. Like shots were seven nothing in the yeah, first five minutes. Yeah, like you're minutes. getting bodied. They, you get scored on, and then you score on a power play. Your only power play of the game, by the way, which is nonsense. Um, but that slow start, like you're coming out super flat. Well, that's the a problem. Sl- the slow start with the bad goaltending on top of it. Yeah, yeah. Georgiev did not have a good game tonight. He sure did. It didn't. was evident from the start. He just didn't look comfortable in net, and that's the difference, right? The Avs have had a lot of slow starts this season. The difference between the wins and losses, though, is what's happening in goal. Yeah, and they weren't and getting it in goal tonight at all. Alexander Georgiev is deciding a lot of games for them, where it's like if he plays well, they're winning. Yep. Like yeah. they're finding a way. They're and that's winning. Just the lack of talent and they have up front. W- but. Yeah, and when when. He does not have a good game, and he wasn't good tonight. I, yep. You know, tough, like, giving up a goal on a three-on-one. Like, that hurts. Yep. But you give up two goals from distance. That on, weren't particularly yeah, special. They weren't, yeah, they weren't all that special. Like, they were just... They, they were just not very good. Uh, and you give up two of those things. Like, you're putting a team that can't score at 5v5 really behind an eight ball here. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it, it just was, he was just not very good. And the team in front of him didn't do him a lot of favors. They sure did. Uh, and it was just one of those nights where you're like, eh, the team just didn't play very well. Yeah. Like you're not looking at one guy. You're not looking at one line. You're not looking at any one thing you're looking at. I, I think a pretty good embodiment of it is you're down five to three. You pull the goalie with about three minutes to play. You have puck possession almost the entire time. You get one shot on goal. Yeah. One. Yeah. And that's. There are a lot of games over the last two, three weeks where the Avs end up losing, but you look at their process and go, you know what? They actually played pretty well tonight, regardless of the scoreboard. Yeah, and Tonight was not really one of those games. They've, they've played a lot better than their results have really should. Like, they should have probably won by a decent margin in that like that Islanders game. Yep. Yeah. You know, they probably should have beaten Montreal by a little bit more than they did. It, yep. Like uh, their their lack of finish is why those games went where they did, but they found a way and you just live with it. You're like, "Okay, two points is two points." Especially against Eastern teams. You don't care. But this was I, I mean, this was just they were awful. Like and it felt it felt like they started the game horribly. Yep. They got down. They came to life. Figured and then you were out. like, oh, okay. And then, uh, and then they get down two to one again, and you're like. <sighs> well, they they got a little spark during the power play. Yeah. Yep. Good scored immediately, there. man. Yeah, like, they scored off of the faceoff, basically. Yeah. A little scrum, good little battle in the corner. Win it, get a goal, and then you feel like, all right, things are going to head the right way. And then it went immediately back to the bad play all the way I, around. Th- oh. Well, I know. Uh, I know, I think it's Kevin Wong in our chat had been questioning every game. Why don't the Avs put Evan Rodriguez on the on that McKinnon wing? Look where yeah. he scores from on this power play. I mean, yeah. the dude's got a point. Well, I mean, he's got he's got that great shot. Yeah, and the one-timer at very least. Yeah, and yeah. like the, the reason that you're having JT Comfer over there is because he's winning you a face-off. Yep. He's your best face-off guy. Like, yep. I, I get why JT Confer's on well, there, and but... Then, and then you're like, okay, well, Valdez Hughes gets hurt. We'll play them both. Yeah. Like, all right. <laughs> We're done. JT's better in that bumper position. Yeah, well, I, JT's really not meant to be on a power play at all. Shouldn't be on power play one if you're healthy. Yeah. yeah. yeah no, I mean, but he doesn't have that dangerous shot, shot from the other side. That's why I'm saying that bumper, that bumper spot's a good spot for him. 
It's oh the spot that shouldn't exist is the good spot. For <laughs> he, no, he, he, he's, he's, <laughs> I, I, I think I would argue that like in with their with their current health, I don't know that I care a lot. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but even when they're healthy, I just don't. I I just don't think that he brings a lot of value beyond yeah. maybe winning a face off. Agree. Yeah. Um, because like you see him in front of the net, he's like JT Confer's like a solid, totally fine NHL player. He's playing first line center right now. Yep. And like he has the abs have gotten away with him moonlighting in that yeah. role and it's been better. On any healthy NHL really team, expected. that dude has no business being anywhere near the first line. Exactly. Yeah. And and it's he's like he's got value to a team, but on a power play where you're like, what skill does he really bring to this unit? Outside of winning you a face off and being a right handed shot. Yeah. Yep. What's it's, the value it's not of much. JT Confer over, I guess, like an Alex Newman? Well, and, and honestly, a perfect example for the Avs tonight of, I don't think JT Confer played bad, but he slammed face first into his skill ceiling tonight. Yeah, I mean, their fifth goal, the, the fifth Arizona goal, I know we're obviously going to jump around a bit yeah, here, but like the fifth Arizona sure. goal is a great example of if JT Confer could finish because he gets... <laughs> Three world class passes yeah. to create Great a scoring a opportunity back for posts, him, and he just on the back post, it, and, yeah. and I mean he chunks it into yeah. the corner. <laughs> yeah, like it, it's like me hitting out of a sand trap. Like <laughs> there was a divot on the fucking ice with that thing, man. Like it was bad. It looked it lackadaisical too. It was just did it not look lackadaisical. It did. In front of it the did. I think lackadaisical kind of describes all of their like collective play. Yeah. Other than maybe Alex Newell was like a. Alex, Man on fire Alex tonight. Just Newhook and finish. Nico Rantanen from yeah. ten minutes in the second period to ten well, minutes in the third. <laughs> well, you had you had like Alex, you, like Alex Newhook, Ben Myers were both flying around. Ben Myers was moving. That's fair. Doing things, creating chances, involved in stuff, and they they finished none of it. Yep. And so you're like, what does this matter? Hopefully the process just keeps working for Alex Newhook. Oh, the Nuggets aren't losing be... by twenty anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it used to be. Alex Newhook needs to drop his shoulder and go to the net. Alex Newhook needs to move his feet. Yeah. He's doing all those things now. Now it's, you've got to uh, finish uh, well, yeah. those. The only I, I want to touch on this point here from Timmy that because of, yeah, because because of they can't the travel NHL's the break, holiday yeah. rules, oh, yeah. they had to fly in today. And if anybody of you were on Twitter today, the Southwest Nightmare, well, you, yeah. saw, you saw that their flight did not go particularly well. Oh, yeah, because they were on there saying that it was a bumpy it ride. It was a really rough ride. So you're talking about they fly in the day of the game. Like, you're in a really tough spot. Now, this is not an excuse for shitting the bed against the Arizona Coyotes, <laughs> who are not actively trying but to a, win games. But context well, does management. matter. But it is a, why were they lethargic? Why are they a little lacking in some energy? You can look at something like that and say, this might explain why. But it, at the end of the day, like, okay, context, sure. <laughs> but you needed to be better. And I want to emphasize, we all feel that they needed to be better. I, they were not good enough. But you did have... And we'll have some bright was, spots that we'll get to. It was the travel day. Yeah. There were some good bounces. You do have a goal taken away from you. Not correctly. We'll get to that. Yeah. But like you do have a goal taken away from you yeah. that would have made it a 3-3 game. And you do leave a couple of goals on the ice. For sure. And there's, with, with, a again, a lack of finish. There's, uh, there's a lot of different angles to still get into here. I do want to get to the positives. I do want to hit on... At an individual level, what I think is the other huge negative beyond Georgiev tonight, and that being the Avs' second defensive pairing, was just a nightmare tonight. Yeah, they end up on the score sheet because they make one nice play, and Miko, like the puck, like hits Miko. I don't even but, know but, if it's a proper yeah, tap. right, right. It, it hits his shins, and <laughs> but they were those two, and and what what sucks is like you can't even be like, but Sam Gerrard, and but you can't be like, but Eric Johnson, collectively. A disaster. Yeah. The, them together was just unacceptably awful. They were like trying to one up each other, and who could have a worse shift at one point? <laughs> because Sam Gerard would put put together just a, a god awful shift, and then they would roll on out, and then EJ was like, "It's my turn." What if I pinched and crashed into my own forward? What if, what if I pinched into nothing <laughs> and give up a three on one that had no chance of not being an odd man rush? <laughs> And then Sam Gerard's like, watch and then this. Sam Gerard's like, how about you put me in a three-on-one position and I provide zero resistance? 
It was rough, man. It was rough. I don't. Where you're, where you, and and like that's one where you're looking at Alexander Yurgiev and you're like, what can we do, man? You feel awful <laughs> yeah. for him because that's going on him. Like, oh, it's a minus one for those guys. Whoa, but like. That's on like that. That end up ends yeah. up with an eight fifty save percentage. It directly tonight. goes yeah. against him. <laughs> Sammy would have had a better chance just laying down right there. I mean, do anything. Just well, lay down. L- literally. Just lay down. And it's so funny. You hate how much like the you hate the slide that the Avs defensemen revert to. You should have done it there too quickly. But you're like, if he just slid, <laughs> that guy has to either beat Georgiev or that that pass yeah, doesn't get through. Stupid or it's sauce. Be a yeah. great sauce pass. Right, like it provides resistance. Yeah, and and him like, no, he just uh, got I awkwardly turned around. Turned around. Yeah. Like I, it's so bad. It was yep. so bad, and I don't. I think the pinch is worse. I do too. Oh, I, I, but you can't fault Sammy for that because, I mean, I if can. It's a three on, well, you can, but if it's a three on one. You're supposed you're supposed to score. You're you're not, and what's what's frustrating is the passing play that they ran is the exact passing play that the Avs had just completed. Sure, tic tac toe. Except on and the then back end of the it, finish, and yeah. they were way further apart. It was <laughs> a much higher skill play, and Comfer chunks it on the back end there, it's, it's, and they don't. And like <laughs> that feels like well, the difference. Like yeah. okay, like they they cashed that opportunity. Yeah. They also created. A bunch of high danger so, chances tonight. Yeah. Here's the thing with that EJ play is we're talking about the fifth goal here. It, I I know, but I just want to. Well, I want to. That's how bad it was. We're talking about the fifth goal, I'm, but it was like first four well, weren't that much better. But that's the funny thing is, even as devastating as the fourth goal was, it felt like the Avs were still in it until that fifth goal goes in the back of the net. Yeah, because wow. I mean they just come back from a two goal deficit right. and uh, against Nashville and. Like they were creating enough offensively, yeah. You know they and they end up scoring three, and they had one taken away. Yeah. So they have four. They have four pucks that went into the net tonight, and it still felt like they lost going away. Yep. It's tough. Uh, on that note, we are brought to you by Athletic Greens. EJ, I love you. You need some Athletic Greens for those hips, buddy. The skating was rough tonight, man. Uh, go get yourself some Athletic Greens today at athleticgreens.com slash avalanche. It's great right now. We still have a bunch of people walking around saying they're getting the flu. Athletic Greens helps boost your immune system to take care of that. They also got 75 different vitamins and minerals, a bunch of probiotics and adaptogens too. A bunch of athletes use it as part of their daily routines. And when you order now, you can get a year's supply of vitamin D along with it. So head on over to athleticgreens.com slash avalanche to order today. Just one scoop in your water every morning to take control of your health. Also brought to you by Illegal Pete's. Athletic Greens, good for you. Illegal Pete's, not as good for you, but delicious. You can go get yourself an Illegal Pete's burrito today. Happy hour from 3 to 6. They're so good. Genuinely so good. It's one of those things that uh, I struggle to get in Winnipeg. And when I get back to Denver, I'm like, like, I need that. Burrito time. I'm very... Happy that I live east of the bar because if you don't know, there's an illegal Pete's like two blocks west of here. Mm-hmm. So as long as I don't drive west on <laughs> Colfax, but if I drive west and I see illegal Pete's, I'm like, eh, maybe I just stop in for for a quick burrito. Maybe it'll be good. The nice the nice thing is is that it's on the far side of the street. Yeah, it's and true. I like go out of my way to reduce the number of in city left turns that I make. So you're just staying Are you away. A UPS driver? No. <laughs> <laughs> but this is how I only turn right. No, this is when I when I map out my uh, routes places. This is a very specific thing that I do, uh, because the majority of like in city accidents happen when people are trying to turn left. Yep. Because they're going across traffic, and if you just make right hand turns. It's very, it's very safe and very methodical, and it's why I haven't gotten into an accident in a really, really long time. So you would think, but my last accident was someone turning left into me. Yeah, and like, there you go. Well, that, <laughs> that shit happens. <laughs> anyway. Either way, go get yourself some Illegal Pete's. You can still get their Christmas gift card deal. So good. Get a $100 gift card. They'll give you 25 bucks on top for free. Jump on it. And that's like multiple burritos. That's like They're three like, burritos. Yeah. Have, have free burritos. Yeah. <laughs> and what are you going to say no to free burritos? Like, give me a break. Second period of the DNVR Avalanche podcast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. It's a heart. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dunk on EJ a little bit more, but just know uh, that it's with love. And it's not like 
I saw somebody like, oh, the, the dunks on EJ like bum me out or whatever. But it's like, look, when he plays poorly, right. he plays poorly. He just uh, it's not an, it's not an indictment on his career. It's no. not an indictment he, on him. It's the not an NHL indictment is, on how we feel about him or whatever. Still but, a business, and when that dude's gonna play not, like he did tonight, it's yeah. not good enough. Yeah, it's not good, and it's real. It's real bad. EJ was the start of the changing of the culture of the ass yeah. from. Well, and like there, there should be no lack of appreciation for what Eric Johnson has meant to the organization absolutely. on the whole. And I absolutely want to emphasize that they are separate. You can criticize a player for how he played in a game and not have it be an indictment of his entire season or yeah. all these other things, like these big picture things. But Eric Johnson was bad tonight. Sam Gerard was bad tonight. Yeah. And they, there's And when they play on a pairing together and they're both bad. And it's forced to be your second guess, pairing. Like, guess who gets feasted upon? Right. It's no surprise. Yeah. Because you're not putting out Andreas England and Brad Hunt against other teams' middle six level competition. That's yeah. not going to do any better. So it's a really tough spot for the Avs defense when those guys don't play well. Let's see how bad it got. I mean, especially when your bottom pairing there on D took two penalties. Tonight. Yeah. It was a struggle for those two. Didn't make the Avs' job any easier. Yeah, so they end up with positive possession numbers. Sure, but, you know. Barely. <laughs> on the ice for three goals against. Yeah. And that's not a on the ice for three goals against. That's uh, These dudes are making errors leading directly like, to these goals. This, yeah. this just happens sometimes where a guy's like, you're like, that guy's not even involved in this. But you're talking about a, a, a defensive pairing that just was not good tonight and actively hurt them. And then your third pairing... Brad Hunt has a delay of game penalty, and Andreas England had a penalty that I forgot. <laughs> but it was a penalty. I don't remember. I don't remember what he got called for. That both oh, him and Brad Hunt shooting. cutting the guy down in it the was middle, a slash. right down the middle. That yeah. was it. Yep, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So you're saying you're you're talking about your third pairing each takes a penalty. Your second pairing is on the ice for three goals against <laughs> an even strength. And Kale McCarr is playing twenty seven. Kale, Kale McCarr and Javon <laughs> Tapes. I thought both were really good yes, tonight. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's they had their, they had some downsides, some things I didn't love, but overall you're like, my gosh, and man. And the bad is bad. There's no two ways around it. It's bad. And then you slam on top of that. EJ rips a puck a million miles an hour off a post tonight. Yeah. Kale McCarr rings a post tonight. He did get a goal eventually. Yeah. You watch some of the other goals that aren't directly uh, uh, the Avs' fault ridiculous bounces where Devon Taves blocks a shot with yeah. his skate and it goes right yeah. on the Schmaltz's the stick. Second, the like... second goal is a play where that's a that's a play that they designed out of coming out from Schmaltz yep. to Nick Ritchie out in front and Ritchie flubs the shot and it goes off of Devon's st skate right to back to right Schmaltz. Right on Schmaltz's <laughs> stick right where and he gets and he's a foot from the opening that opened up when Georgiev went to stop Richie's shot and when he squared up on Richie, yeah. where you're like, look, I don't know what you want the Avalanche to do differently there because you can't look at what Devon Taves did and say that's bad and do it on purpose. <laughs> right. He's trying to block Nick Ritchie's shot. He doesn't know Nick Ritchie's going to He, gonna he blub successfully that blocks Nick Ritchie's and, shot. And it, like, and it just takes a bounce. And like, that's just how hockey is sometimes. Sometimes a puck lands on a stick and a guy takes advantage of it. And that's that was the case in that in that in that situation. I think what sucks about the third goal, that's the third goal. Yeah. The second goal was Kraus with the pick in front. Yeah, which will like it will, pick play. It will never like, get called. Like I know. You, it I will know, only but... get called in the first round again with Toronto <laughs> and Tampa Bay. Is <laughs> the only time you'll see that pick play get called. But it's the same kind of effect. Like Nick Bukestad is just trucking along. Yeah. <laughs> You know, like uh, like when they run a screenplay in football, yeah, and the dude takes off five yards downfield, and he's blocking a guy before the ball right, is thrown, yeah. and you're like, "What the fuck, man?" <laughs> it it was the same thing. Like, it was that pick play, and it leads, and that's a great play by Kraus. Totally. Oh yeah. And Gets to his backhand. backhand. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and that's a great play, and that's a that's a pick play where you're just like, you 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 probably just want to save there. Yeah. Blaze. McCarr lost his stick, too, yeah, on that pick. Yeah, it's what well. started the play, yeah. for yeah. sure. That's why he comes out of the corner unimpeded. Yeah. He's got nobody there, because I think it's Taves that's just getting walked by Bukestad yeah. in the middle of the ice, where he's just, like, <laughs> like he's not trying to do anything yeah. other than, like, Just run glide this guy. into his way. Yeah. Uh, Blaze, based on your injury history, you seem like a pretty unlucky hockey player. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, better to be lucky or good? Uh, lucky, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> what are you talking about? Just checking. I mean, we saw Ben Myers be good tonight. And didn't and, matter and much. We saw Arizona be lucky. <laughs> it's true. Well, also good. Like, I don't want to say that they of only course. won this game because of, of luck. Because they obviously, they outplayed Colorado. They deserve to win. It's like the girl from, uh, what is that group? The Marvel group that's her, like, superpower is luck. I don't know. Um, <laughs> the boys? Domino? Domino. Yeah. <laughs> that's her superpower is good luck. Yeah. The neat. Neat. Well, that, and like it that's every like, Skyrim character. Well, so I when make. you're in, when you, if you watch Deadpool two, she's part of X Force. I oh, like, that's right, X Force. Yeah, what I was and she, yeah. Uh, like, the way it manifests in the movies is cool. Yeah, because she like does like silly shit, puts herself in the <laughs> gunfire, and like, you know, it, it just goes her way all the time. It must be nice. Yeah, it's like not invincibility, but it's like luck, <laughs> and you're just like, oh yeah, like. And, well, and and this is the conversation I want to have. The Avs lineup right now is gonna struggle to overcome bad luck on a lot of nights. Yeah, yeah and then it's a really it's a really good point, uh, and I think it's a fair it's fair to say that like hey like you can't ask for a whole lot more from Miko Rantanen. Yeah, <laughs> he's scored an awesome. one real and one fake goal tonight. Like, they were both cool. The, the, the fake, fake one was, was uh, incredible. Was yeah. Outstanding. The fake goal is like one of the better goals you'll see the year. Yeah. Uh, the, the real goal is just like, again, I don't know if that's a tip or if it just like hits him and goes in and you're just like, well, that's pretty lucky. <laughs> He also, um, he also I don't know. murdered somebody in the corner. Oh, he yeah. <laughs> killed Troy Stetcher, I think, is, <laughs> is who it was. was. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, when when you get the NHL hits animation on a helmet <laughs> where it just pops straight up, you're like, he got that guy good. He got that guy pretty good. <laughs> it's it's just an interesting game. Since we brought up yeah, the, the goal that sure. didn't count, look, very clearly the definition of offsides that's never going to count. Yeah, I'm not upset about it. It at really all. shouldn't it, count. I mean, it should. It should have been blown dead live. So in the never, moment, right? So we never have a chance to be like, "What a sick goal that never counted." <laughs> and all the people mad about like, oh, these offsides reviews are ruining. Like that's that kind of really yeah. obvious one. That's that the one it's there see, for. Yeah, you can see in real time. Like that's the one that has to get called. It back. Just it just sucks that it was so dope. <laughs> it just it just does. Like it has to get called back. Yep. Unfortunate, but yeah. reality. I saw there were arguments over possession or not possession, and I think the yeah. NHL has kind of gotten cute with its interpretation of that. Uh, that puck is clearly bouncing on him. Yeah, I, and he's two feet into the zone before the yeah, puck. Yeah, like, like I'm. For me, I'm. I don't know. I'm. <laughs> if the ice wasn't so shitty, that puck doesn't just randomly start hopping around like a live grenade. But you saw, and you saw a lot of. You saw a lot of pucks just, especially at the end of the game when the ice got nasty. Yeah, the you saw so many pucks uncontrollable just, nonsense. Yeah. yeah, it was like it was like uh, you guys see Ocean's Eleven or it was actually Ocean's Thirteen when they're in the casino and they're using the lighters to flip dice. Oh yeah, yeah, and and they're yeah, and it might have been Eleven. I don't know. It was one all the of same them. Thing. Yeah. yeah, and that was like what they were doing. That's what it felt like with the puck. <laughs> it felt like Andre Torini was standing on the Coyotes bench with a Flipping little lighter. A lighter. And every time the puck would get close to a stick, he'd click it, and it would just hop like over that. a stick. And you're like, <laughs> Blaze was talking the hell, about man? the microchip pucks in pregame, all right? Yeah. <laughs> it's all coming together. <laughs> it's a conspiracy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was a WGC's, but whatever. Well, and if it was a conspiracy, Arizona would be using that to lose. <laughs> <laughs> true. <laughs> true. True, 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 true. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, especially if they watched Connor Bedard the other oh day. Oh my Holy goodness! <laughs> like on a loaded Canada team, right. that guy is miles better than the other guys <laughs> on that team. Spooky, Holy man, shit, dude. it's spooky. I wonder, stuff. I wonder what caliber of player he would be in the NHL if he was there now, today. Uh, it's serviceable. I mean, he'd be better than Ben Myers. No, he wouldn't. Oh. <laughs> take it back. <laughs> Ben Myers gonna come out on the ice in a cape next game. He'll be better than Ben Myers in next year too. Fair enough. <laughs> He's playing top six on most most teams. Yeah, I mean, he'd be Colorado's two C. Yeah, yeah, in yeah. a heartbeat. <laughs> and would probably score forty. Like I, he's incredible. I. <clears throat> It's I'm been curious. fun to watch the people talk about Adam Fantilli because he's like in the conversation. Well, because they're, well, they're like, look at the year he's having a dominant freshman yeah. year. He's got major size as a, you know, he's six two, six three. Uh, but 
Bedard is like, <laughs> you watch them play in that game the other day, and you're like, there is a real difference here. <laughs> now, it's one game, of course. <laughs> but if you've watched Connor Bedard long enough, you know that that's just a day for him. Yeah. Well, just that's kinda, existing. It reminds you of the Makar when he was in college, and you're like, oh, this is a man playing against <laughs> yeah. boys type of hockey. The sophomore year, for yeah. sure, where you're just like, oh. <laughs> uh. He lost, wow. a, he lost a puck there, so he murdered that guy, <laughs> yeah. got the puck, and went and scored. <laughs> and then danced all of his friends, uh, yeah. asked his girlfriend out, and went top shelf. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. What, so what was the – I know you kind of said it was the fourth goal. Is that goal called back kind of the mental start of the decline for the Avs in this game, or do you think they – they no. functioned okay. No, because I think what it really is is it's the. I mean, it hurts, right? <laughs> yeah. Obviously, but it's also like it's so obviously not a goal that should count. That yeah, like there was no reaction from the Avs. Like they looked at it on the bench and they were like, "Yeah, this is coming back." <laughs> yeah. I I don't know that that's the start of like the mental decline, but I just don't think they can survive. In a game where their special teams lost the battle. Yeah. Because you give up a power play goal. And you give up uh, one immediately after one. a power play. And then the one that they the one that they give up right after the power play ends is the penalty on Lekkanen that shouldn't exist. Sure. Yeah. And that's the one where you're like, the abs can't, they're not good enough right they now. They can't survive that. To survive yeah. a bad break that leads to directly to a goal. A disallowed goal, whether or not you, you know, whatever, however, like yeah. whatever. Um, and then uh, them them getting a goal immediately after yeah. you successfully kill a penalty. Like, you're talking about those are game-changing moments, and they all went Arizona's direction in this, and you never got another power play opportunity. Yep. No, it was not a good call. You're fucking wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I certainly... Not an excuse. Like they showed it on the they showed the reverse angle of it, and Arturi Lekkinen just yeah, touches right. him. Well, and yeah. and look, it's not a that's not a penalty. The Avs found ways to lose this game all on their own. Yeah, and like they kill the penalty. But you're watching Alex Newhook get mugged every time down the ice. Multiple times in the corner, he had uh, if not one. There was there was one time early in the first early in the game, two arms, all the way around him. Yeah, and you're just like. I know. I, I guess there's not a penalty for hugging, <laughs> but they call this holding most of the time. <laughs> and it was a frustration to see, you know, like a delay a game is a delay a game. You can't whatever. It's not a judgment call. Uh, the England call is an is an easy. That is a no doubter. Yeah. The Lekkonen one is the one that you can't. You just they, they can't overcome that situation in a game where they're not playing well. Yep. <laughs> like. The abs could, if at full strength, you expect that the abs are no problem. Yeah, with but, one, one dude named Nathan McKinnon, then the lineup goes a long yeah, way. Yeah, well, but, and, and you're, now we're back to the your Landeskog, Nachushkin, McKinnon. Right. You're talking. You're talking a fucking legitimate first line. Yeah. Yep. Is is on your IR like coming overcoming those things? Uh, is the thing that a great team can do, even especially against a bad team. But this version of the Avs is going to struggle. Even against Arizona, it's going to struggle. And then the reality here, they just didn't play well enough. Agree. Like, we're talking about, oh, this didn't go their way, and that didn't go their way, and that's how you build a loss. But, but they also didn't, just play better or those things go your way. They did not play well. <laughs> yeah. And when you saw what was, what was happening, what was not happening in the Islanders game, in the, in the Montreal game, for most of the Sabres game. Yep. I feel like I make a point and they cheer and it <laughs> boosts my ego. Keep going. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so it's like they're they, about to cheer more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they just they they just did not play well enough to overcome those things that don't go their way. And in those other games that we were talking about, that four game winning streak. They played well enough. Right. You look at the Nashville yeah. game. They deserve to be down 2 nothing, And then they deserve moment, to win the game. Yeah. They deserve to win that game. They overcame that and, and outplayed them and deserved. They deserved the outcomes. And in this game, they deserve this outcome. Yeah. Their, their play matches the end result. It doesn't really match the 6-3 feel to it. I, but who cares? Yeah. The game was over. It's, whether it's 6-3, 3-2, it doesn't whatever, matter. Yeah. 
they they got the result that their play deserved and that uh, that's the ultimate disappointment but it's also the a jumping off point because you know that this is a team that just doesn't do that often the one time that we saw them do that this year was eight AHL players were in their lineup <coughs> they're just not there right now yep so i feel good about kings on thursday i don't you know, I don't know if they win or not, but I feel better that they will play better. I, th I think tonight, too, is like this type of game is when you really miss Landis Cog because of the net front presence that he brings on a chaotic yeah. night like tonight. Nuke too. Him being down there to clean those pucks up yeah. is a game changer in games like this. Not every game, but this game specifically tonight. There was not a lot of net front pressure, yeah. basically, on Ingram. So, you know, is he was cleaning up the front of his net pretty easily. Yep. And, 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 you know, it's not even for lack of chances for the Avalanche either. Chat mentioning Mulgan's breakaway opportunity yeah, that has a breakaway. doesn't finish. Ben Myers yeah. just passes yeah. up. A, 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 he loses control of the puck coming into the zone where if he'd kept it, he's got a clean breakaway. Yep. He regains it and still gets a golden scoring chance where if he makes that pass across the ice Cogs to Cogliano. has got half yeah. the neck to shoot Cogliano, yeah. and now the hard part of that pass is it's going behind Myers' body to a left-handed shot. That's And Cogliano, to be honest, just his body wasn't turned like he was ready for it. Yeah. So he was going to have to be shooting against his body on that yeah. one-timer. So it's a it's it's not like a guarantee yeah, or anything. Yeah, that's not no. a layup, but the pass was. Yep. Um, so you're two two scoring chances right there. Yep. Uh, Alex Newhook had a couple of really good opportunities. Yeah. The one he where did. he went to his backhand early on in the game, where he walked in right in onto the doorstep. Um, Raises that just a little bit. That's a goal. I mean, if he if he just actively tries to slide at five hole instead of kind of panic backhanding it into yeah. whatever he can and, and if he's very deliberate about trying to get the five hole he probably gets it because it was there so those are three golden scoring chances that they leave yep you also talk ej and kale mccarr smoke a post yep. like this is why we said uh jt confer on the back door they left goals on the ice yep no doubt about it we're, t we're talking about they didn't play very well but they left goals out there and this is a team that is just not good enough in its current iteration to leave goals on the ice. Well. Against anybody. If they left goals out there, don't leave your goals out there with DraftKings Sportsbook. Use code DNVR when we sign up for a new account. Bet on any NHL team to win their next game for just 5 bucks and get $150 in free bets. You can bet on whoever you want in the NHL to get that. Once you get the money, you can bet on whatever you want, whether it's the Nuggets or otherwise. Plenty of options with DraftKings to bet on literally any sport in the world. There's some crazy stuff out there that you can bet on, let me tell you. Uh, you can bet on the weather. That's a thing that you can do. Always bet against Buffalo. <laughs> Weather-wise. <laughs> True. Well, Sports-wise, too. <laughs> Let's be real. The Bills. like Hard to bet against them As much right as I now, love yeah. watching Josh Allen play, like <laughs> always bet against Buffalo. There you go. Leave it at that. Go over to DraftKings Sportsbook. Use the DNVR code. Must be 21 or older. Colorado only, other terms, restrictions, and conditions apply. See the show notes down below for details. And, of course, if you have a gambling problem, call 1-800-522-4700. And then go get yourself a Breck Brew with your winnings. Amazing beer. You can get eight different kinds on tap down at the DNVR bar. You can find it at your local liquor store with the Breck Beer Locator online. They do amazing work. They have amazing stuff. They're going to start phasing out the Christmas ale very quickly here. So if you want to get that, make sure you get in on it. If not, their spring ale should be right around the corner. So you can get something a little uh, a little lighter, a little flavorful. I know AJ is usually into the strawberry skies and the things like that. Totally. If he's forced to drink a beer. so Yeah, I really like the strawberry sky, man. It's a really good light beer. Like it's, And that's a, a big part of my problem with beer mostly is that it's it, it feels thick. like it just yeah. weighs me down. And... <laughs> That sucks. Do be like that sometimes. Yeah. Either way, check yourself out some Breck Brew, breckbrew.com. They also have dope merch over there if you want to get in on that. Third I period. Like, uh, Breck Brew uh, water bottle on my nightstand. Yeah, there you go. I keep there. Third period of the DNBR Avalanche podcast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Um, this is a good point, too. The lack of drawing penalties, the lack of getting power play opportunities. 
You don't have Nathan McKinnon. You don't absolutely. have Landis Absolutely true. Uh, those guys are hurt, but you also you don't have Tyson Jones. You don't have Nazem Kadri. Two guys who are very, very, very good at specifically drawing penalties. Yeah. Now Kadri gave plenty of them back. <laughs> kind of like um, Rantanen is kind of similar. Yeah. But Rantanen has fallen. I'd, I actually need to check the numbers on this, but I think Rantanen has I fallen pretty with far into the take. negatives. Yeah. Um. What's that? I said I would agree with that take. Yeah. Oh, that Miko is not swung too far yeah, in the wrong direction. Not getting as many calls. Yeah. And, and still taking the stupid ones. He's still yeah. taking a lot of silly stick ones. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for sure. And and because I mean McKinnon draws so many because he moves his feet like. Yeah. I mean he yeah. puts so much pressure on guys because those ex- those first three steps that he has There's actual are the best three steps IEDs in the world. IEDs in his skates. Yeah, he's right. <laughs> like they, he looks like like go go gadget rock yeah. skates. <laughs> And it's you know, uh, you know, Kale and McDavid, like there are some uh, Kairu, some extremely fast skaters out there that can push him for top speed. But, but the first step, the power, yeah, yeah. it's the explosion yeah. that he gets yeah. where he, cl- he closes an eight foot gap like that. Yeah. It's just gone. And that causes guys to uh, figuratively shit their pants. <laughs> And when you see a dude giving McKinnon a twenty foot gap, that's why. Yeah. <laughs> and and he's a and when it comes when a guy's coming out of a corner, you know, McKinnon coming off of the wall, yep. it's crime time. <laughs> because because they don't have it's that or you're gonna let Nathan McKinnon, guy with a forty goal season under his belt, I believe. Uh no, it's like thirty nine. All right. It's, it's like 38 and 39. The so. Buffs can have prime time. The Avs will take crime yeah, time. Mac, <laughs> it's like Mac, Mac creates crime time because he it. puts that kind of pressure. And nobody else really on the Avalanche is quite the same at doing that uh, yep. because they don't have that suddenness to their game. So it's hard to score on power play opportunities that you don't get. Also, the Avs have led the league in power play opportunities like four straight years. They were due for some of this. And, and look, I do think there are some positives you can take from tonight. Erod continues to be great. I, you final, you're finally starting to feel like Kale McCarr is ascending back to alien status. And, was, and he was a little, I mean, there was some hitches in his game tonight. Sure, it wasn't perfect, but there also was a laser beam of a goal and him doing the, a bunch of dope stuff. And the passes. Yeah, yeah. Let's, to Taves yeah. tonight. Oh, <laughs> And Devon, Devon Taves was great. Was, was oh, really yeah. good again. Yeah, yeah. Um, a lot better than bad. And uh, meaningful there. Um, yeah. I Seriously, Ben Myers and Alex Newhook were both flying yep. around. They, they looked great. They were Jones. They got to finish. Yeah, Al- and that's that's where you're frustrated. But we were talking about their process is this. Like, yeah. You compare both of those players tonight to the early season it's versions so, of themselves. Yeah. Where you're I like, just, night and day where are these guys? Like so, Alex Newhook, gets, he was so good. The Jared Bednar at the end of the game was like, Newey. It's a Newey. It's a Newey. Yeah. Newey. How I feel about Newhook is like, I don't feel comfortable saying the actual phrase on air, but Alex Newhook is a really common Australian swear hair away from being so good. <laughs> he's very, he's very good. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm lost on that one. The, uh, what did Australian people call their buddies all the oh, time? Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Mates. <laughs> yeah, he's a mate hair away from being. Why you gotta make it weird? <laughs> <laughs> That's the saying with it's different word than mate. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And everybody's seen. Everybody knows you're familiar with that <laughs> oh, <yeah>. that size. <laughs> we know. Why you gotta make it weird? Uh, there's no going back now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just yeah, like you see those, you see that, and like it's, if that becomes production, you're home. Yeah, yep. You're oh, like, oh, <clears throat> they're so sick again. Well, and then you have a game with a lot of frustrations, and this game really isn't that far away from being five two the other way. Totally. Like, yeah. yeah. If Alexander Yorgiev has a good game, yeah, and because uh, goals, goals one and four for me can't happen. Yep. Your goalie just you want to save there. The other goals. I'm not. I'm not pressed about. You know, of course, you'd love a save on the Kraus one, but you would also love that uh, the, the three or four other things that led directly up to I, it, I where mean, you're just like, shit, dude. Yeah, that one's not on the goalie. That's the defensive uh, breakdown. I don't, with some cheating involved. I don't care how. There's, there's some cheating, and a guy loses a stick, yeah. and there's the resistance, right? 
I just he loses his resistance, and then there's cheating. I in front genuinely of him. don't care which one you pick. I, he has to be at minimum one goal better tonight. I agree. That's just how and your it defense. Is. Your defense should be one goal better. Yep. And now you're talking about a three goal game, which you are in. Yep. And then let the chips let those chips fall where they may. Definitely. Again, back to net front coverage. <laughs> There was some it's not l- great. There's some holes in the Habs net front coverage that happens it throughout happens. the game. Yeah, and it's part of their system. We've talked about that, and I think it it it's lessened when the full healthy defense is there because the skill level's higher, so you don't see those well, breakdowns. I mean, as much. look at a guy like Josh Manson and how big of a difference he alone would make True. in a spot like that. That the misery that he brings yeah, in front of the net. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, yeah, he makes people pay. Let's, let's get yeah, out of here. Got to do the pressure. super chats, yeah, yeah, and then the nuggets are coming on. So, They had a better night. They did, thankfully. It, it was touch and go for, for a while uh, We there. know we're fine. We're at the end of our show yeah. anyway. <laughs> All right, we're at fucking at it. Anyway. $5 from Josh saying a terrible first period finally bit them. They've been getting away with it for the last few games, and now they might learn from it. I mean, they're not starting on slowly on purpose. Yeah. Like, yeah. Them losing a game isn't suddenly going to be like, okay. We should do that again. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's not going to be like the I, light it, bulb went on. And it be like, still does need to get better, though. It, well, and yeah, it, they got to figure out how that to was, start. That was true five hours ago. It was true two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a thing that has to get better. Yeah. Uh, you know, and hey, the team could probably stand to be a little bit better. Yep. Maybe they need to tell Miko to go out there and just annihilate somebody on the first shift. Like, have him take the opening face off, punk a dude, and yeah. then go go like hog wild. I don't yeah. care if you get a penalty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Set a tone. Yeah. I mean, do like Landy did to, to Braden Shen multiple times. <laughs> having, just, just keep yeah. beating him up. Having a fourth line you're actually willing to play might help too, but you yeah, know. Yeah, the I minutes mean, spread well, is bad. Well, and you're like, look, dude, if Curtis McDermott is supposed to punch his way into your heart, let punch him Punch somebody. Yeah. I saw him once. Is that how much he played? Well, I didn't the, look at his the, time on ice. The failed odd man rush that could have been between Jacob yeah. McDonald and Curtis McDermott. Oh, was I saw, like, yeah. You saw Ooh. those two numbers and you're like, no, nope, no, 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 it's not. This was not going any kind of way, no matter what. Just go back to the bench. And then $5 <laughs> from Vaguely Sober with his usual DNVR love. Gonna miss the couch man. Us yeah. Too. Yep. He'll still be around, you know. Yeah. The people going to games will talk to him on the rig. It, and no doubt he'll hop on a pot or two oh, of along course. the way of and, course. and hang out and, you know, whatever. You just have to credit him now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's no longer Evan with the, from, from in front of his couch. <laughs> Evan from in front of his couch on behalf of Colorado Hockey now. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're going to get out of here for tonight. We appreciate all y'all hanging with us, even when the Avs do play a tough one. We'll be back tomorrow for an off day pond. And then, of course, the full gamut with the game on Thursday. So we hope to see you then. We hope you have a great rest of your night. And go enjoy the Nuggets talking about an actual winning game. Bye.